Das ist auch 20 Meilen. Hi everybody, this is Ruben from Engrave. I am one of the three co-founders together with Xavier Hendricks, CTO and Edward van Ham, COO. And uh, here we are, or here I am to answer any of the questions you might have. Hi, Humpty Dumpty, welcome. So um, yeah, feel free to shoot questions in the chat. I'll try to answer them as well as I can. I'll also, we also already have a couple of questions, obviously, and we also, uh, let's say, uh, collected questions during the campaign. So I'm also going to address some of those to make it simple for everybody. Um, and if you have other questions or concerns or anything for that matter, uh, now is a good time to throw it into the group. Yeah, let's say cold indeed. Uh, so maybe also to for uh, the, for anybody, the new people and the the ones already bought. So the campaign is still live for uh, around eight days, I think. So until the twenty fifth of June, and that means that you still have eight days to buy it at the current discounts, which are pretty steep still. Eh? So around thirty eight percent, I believe. Uh, definitely have a look to the to the Indiegogo page if you can. Um, yeah, and so we actually unlocked um, two colors, two limited edition colors. So you can, instead of taking the Obsidian Black, which is the standard color, which will still be there, let's say, after the Indiegogo campaign, um, you can also order green, emerald green, to be exact, and glacier white. And those two colors will disappear after the... Um, after the campaign. So those are actually extremely limited edition just now for people who are um, buying it during the campaign. They can choose that color at the end of the campaign. And so we will be sending a survey and you can basically just choose your color. Probably as you've seen, we've also crossed the 200K uh, Euro funding mark and that unlocked the silver edition. The silver edition comes at a little, um, um, add-on in terms of price. So it costs 19 euros extra or at 20, $21. Uh, dollars. Um, and also that's also in the end of the campaign, you will get the survey, you will be able to, to, to fill in the fact that you want a silver one. And um, the way that that is managed is through Shopify, meaning that you can, if you make your choice, you can immediately purchase the uh, silver one if you want to. It's very seamless, very simple. And if it's just green or white, it's just filling in the survey, we will know and we will make sure you get your favorite color. And obviously gold, like I see in the chat, gold is indeed also part of the potential options, but then we need to reach uh, the 300K mark and we are still um, 75 or 74K left from that. So um, feel free to buy 10 for your family and then maybe we can un unlock the gold edition. All right, uh, let me see if there are already some questions. How many people do you currently have with Engrave and how many do you need to execute against your launch plans? Uh, for launch pl plans, I would say we are actually um, doing, doing great and we don't really need additional people for that. Um, what's important to know about our team is we are very lean in the sense that we are only three official people on the team. Uh, we also, and we actually work, uh, as you've probably noticed, with a lot of world leading institutions in their respective fields. For example, IMEC is one of our product development uh, partners. They are wor world leader in uh, nanotechnology uh, innovation. We also have uh, COSIC, which is the world leader in research and development for, um, uh, for applied cryptography and hardware security. And yeah, sorry, my, my team is spinning me uh, in my, in my uh, dance, so I'm gonna put this here. Um, and so we have all of these all of these uh, partners ready. We also have the industrialization partners ready. We have chosen them. They are um, actually already in a certain stage of, of the industrialization. I'm just gonna show you some examples of uh, today. I can only show it like this because we cannot share screens, but here you can see that we have a lot of beautiful engraved zeros on the table. And uh, for us, it was sort of a quality test. You can see them in the box. Uh, so. 
um, soon they will be in your mailbox and then you can start truly, truly owning what is yours. Um, let me see. Any special deals on this live? Maybe, maybe. Stay tuned and you will see. Emerald Green, yes, certainly. There was a question here. Can COVID affect your supply chain? So um, obviously COVID can affect supply chains and, they, and it has. Uh, in our case, I would say so far the impact remains uh, limited and um, it, it, it didn't change, let's say, or, or didn't push our deadline of October so far. Um, obviously, COVID is still around, so it's still a risk that we have and still a risk that we have to manage. Uh, but so far, I would say so good. Um, <clears throat> then, is biometrics used to access the zero like a pin code? With there, what you have to know is we indeed support, obviously, your biometrics, fingerprint. We have the pin code. Pin code is ideally eight digits, but you can actually go from four till eight, you can choose. And the pin code is always activated, meaning that you cannot sign a transaction without your pin code. You cannot authenticate on the device saying it's you without the pin code. Uh, so the pin code is, is compulsory, the uh, fingerprint is not. Eh? And what you have to know about biometric sensors, be it fingerprints or even facial recognition, is that there is a certain uh, margin of error. And even let's say if you take your iPhone, the issue is that Obviously, you can see after a few attempts with your fingerprint, it stops accepting it and it asks you for your PIN code. And the reason is because uh, it depends a bit on the fingerprint sensor you use, but um, like eight out of 100 times sometimes, or let's say even one out of 100 times, I could unlock your phone with my fingerprint, even though it's absolutely not related to each other. And so therefore you can never rely only on uh, biometrics. So you have to rely on the both or on the, on the pin code. So it adds to the security, but fingerprint or any biometrics for that matter, simply it wouldn't do um, on its own. Um, all right, next question. Uh, will you support LTO network mainnet? on the engrave. We will not support this. <laughs> uh, not uh, no, no LTO network, um, too bad, because I see you said uh, that would be a buy, for, a buy now for you, uh, but we're honest, uh, so we don't uh, support that. And um, if we would, it would be definitely after October. So it will be something for us to review then, uh, but so far, no. We, we did add it to the backlog, actually. All right. Is Tesla blue real? <laughs> no, not not uh, during the current uh, stage. So we have white, green, black, silver, maybe gold. Um, Tesla blue is something we we like. Something that could become one of those new ed limited edition colors. There are many colors in the world, as if as you probably know. Um, so green, white. Now they will disappear. They're gone. And then I guess. Tesla Blue could become a, a real opportunity, yeah. Invest in Engrave, it's not really a question I see, but yeah, so um, right now it's not possible to invest, but we do believe in obviously blockchain technology. We're here to foster worldwide blockchain adoption. What we do for that is we, we basically fix the security hurdle and the usability hurdle and a couple of other ones, but not necessarily linked to our products. Uh, I'm also trying to uh, bring, let's say, um, promising projects and, and good investors together in uh, my other role as Big Angels Lead for uh, crypto and, and blockchain business angels. Um, but that said, I do believe that we have to eat the pudding ourselves as a company. So that means that we do believe that at some point in time, it will be 2021 at the earliest, we might do an STO. And um, the, way, the way, and also why we are postponing that a bit is because we think we're already in a sort of a risky business. It's hardware, it's security, it's crypto. It's a, it's a challenge. And um, adding an unproven model of STOs today to, to that uh, would, be a, would be a bit of a stretch. Uh, so we first want to see it out alive in the open uh, and see how that works. Um, but we believe that once we have, let's say, a solid base of users, we also want to reward them 
by giving them actually the possibility to maybe invest in Engrave through an STO and they can actually keep their tokens on an Engrave Zero, right? So yeah, it's an, it's an opportunity possibility for maybe second half of 2021. Yeah, uh, battery life, good question. So for the battery life, you have around a thousand charge sessions. So that's a lot. Eh? That would mean if you, if you charge it every day, like a crazy guy and you use your hardware wallet constantly, you would still be able to, to use it for three years. Um, and even after those 1000 charge sessions, the battery will still have 90% of its capacity. So it's a really, it's basically um, uh, a low power and highly efficient kind of battery that we are using. Um, so it's actually even better than the ones that are used in smartphones. And also you must understand that you don't use your hardware wallet um, as often as your um, smartphone, of course. What kind of tests were performed on the zero to check against any vulnerability? So yeah, first of all, in terms of um, the online um, attack surface, we, we don't have an online attack surface. The reason is that we don't connect online. So you generate your private keys offline, you keep them offline, you never show them. The only way you communicate is with the app and with the Engrave Zero through one-way QR codes. So basically you make a picture on your, um, you show a picture, which is a, a QR code is a picture with some sort of data. It's limited in the QR code. So you can actually see all of it and you can show it to your app. Your app can scan it. The app will show you exactly what it's going to do. So it's, it's, it's very open source minded in the sense that you always know what you are actually scanning. Think about a USB. USB is just a wire. Um, it's it's dif more difficult to see what's coming in and what's coming out. Um, so yeah. And then if you think about, so I would say the, the um, remote attack factor, there simply isn't any, any remote attack surface. So for hackers, the most important business model is, can I uh, make an online connection? Can I do an attack? And can I multiply that attack um, over the whole, the whole net, right? So that's a valid business model. You don't have that business model with our solution. What you can do, obviously, is then go for physical attacks. The issue with physical attacks or the business model with physical attacks is that you have to um, try try the whole, or let's say, do the whole bunch of attacks that you need to get to the, let's say, the keys. You have to do it every time fully again. You have to make a full investment if you do it on every single device. So that's really what uh, plays against a bit, let's say, the physical attackers. So let's say if it costs you $200,000 to hack the device, there should be at least $201,000 on the device for it to be relevant to you. And then I would say even then it would make sense to go to the trouble for just going for $1,000. Um, but that's also why it's recommended to have more than just one hardware wallet if you're talking about a lot of money. And it's the same in the bank world. You're, you have a sort of a guarantee if, let's say, in Belgium, it's 100,000 euros per bank. So if you have 500,000, maybe it's better to sp split it over five banks. Um, and I think with hardware wallets, it, it comes down basically to the same. <clears throat> but um, with that, so the, 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 um, the physical attack surface, we're not talking about two hundred thousand dollars. We're talking about a, a lot, a big, a much higher amount. Um, and also, as you've seen, we've we basically built this device from scratch because we don't want to be an Android phone that goes the other way and basically takes out the online capabilities. We did it the way we believe is right, which is you build up from um, having your basically having nothing and build a device that is completely geared towards one thing. Um, protecting your digital assets and also be completely physically tamper-proof. Um, if anybody would ask the question, I would go into more detail. Otherwise you can see it also on our YouTube, but we are actually, uh, we have several different layers in our anti-tamper framework. Um, and all of them together are extremely hard, if not almost virtually impossible to go through. And then obviously to show our customers how serious we are, we are about security. We certified the device for EL7, which is the highest security certification in the world, also much higher than our closest competitors. And even in the traditional finance world, nobody actually has achieved that, um, that level. And EL7 is something that is tested. So it's sort of an external test that, um, and validated uh, certification that you get for your secure firmware. Uh, let me check the next question. Also, feel free to pick up on what I just said if you have like more deep dive questions.
Um, yeah, can you talk a little about how do you see Engrave compared to other air gapped products such as Gold Car Wallet? So Gold Card, we actually believe it's a very good device, uh, a very good solution. It um, takes to heart some of the really very important parts of building up an anti temper framework. Um, I would say it, it's it's a bit geared more towards a certain niche, yeah? so it's uh, Bitcoin only. Um, so if you have any other cryptocurrencies, well, typically you can't really use a cold card then for that. If we talk about air gapping, it's done through an SD card. Um, so it's it's a bit more cumbersome. So I would say that obviously with our four inch touch screen and, and um, the additional security, we are a device that is geared towards another um, segment of the market. Um, that said, we, we, have, we have a lot of respect for the project. Um, and also, so we have uh, obviously the EAL7 certification for a secure operating system, making it even more secure. We have more coins than not just Bitcoin only. Um, the, the QR code, like I mentioned, we, and we were also really taking the, the latest state of the art when it comes to anti-temper techniques. Coin support for us, it's, it's a breeze, it's easy. It, it's something you don't need with, need with, uh, need with the cold cards. Um, then somebody asks, do you, Lucky shipments to Mexico because Indiegogo rejects my card. Sorry for my horrible English. <laughs> um, so yes, we ship to Mexico. Um, I don't know if I don't know the details of uh, of the card rejection, of course. But feel free to uh, send just your question to support at Engrave.io or directly chat to us on the website, and we will be more than helpful to actually figure it all out together with you. How soon will we be able to order additional theme top plate sets? Um, so over the summer, we will also start um, offering the graphene only in the web shop. So basically that will be as of uh, early July, you will be able to buy 10 graphenes if you want to. <clears throat> when will the liquid app source code be released on GitHub and will Electrum support be available at launch? So the liquid will be released before the shipping. Um, and it will also be open source, so the app. And expect right now uh, that it will be released before shipping somewhere. And we are already looking at the Electrum wallet actually, so that you can directly interact from there. And also, have you, as, as you've seen, I hope from the, the campaign page, the first stretch goal that was unlocked was multi-sig. And basically there we talk about BIP 174 or partially, by, uh, partially signed Bitcoin transactions. Then what is the storage space? The storage space is not a problem. It is more than one gigabyte. So you can have all the coins you want on the device and still have room to almost put on a video on it, a secure video. All right, next one is your device is amazing. And as I'm super concerned about security, I understand that Engrave uses type C USB to update the firmware. Still, it is <clears throat> somehow connected to a computer and an EAL7 secure element. Is it guaranteed that it's 100% risk-free from malware and hackers, even if I connect the device to a compromised computer via USB? <clears throat> so first of all, 100% risk-free, that doesn't exist. That will never exist. Um, but it is about pushing the limits to uh, make attacks economically less interesting. And um, so with us, it's not an EAL7 secure element. It's an EAL7 secure operating system. So I would say the closest competitors when it comes to secure elements, they have typically EL5 plus or EL6 um, on a singular component level. We have gone to the extreme of having an EL7 secure operating system. And that's a level that they refer to as virtually unhackable, but obviously everything is still hackable. It's, it's just about how much money are we going, going to put in and, and so on. Um, and if we talk about, because you also mentioned you're concerned about the firmware, uh, through the USB. So the USB is basically sandboxed from the rest of the device. It's only used for wall charging and for the, uh, um, the firmware updates. And if you want to do a firmware update, your device first goes into a special boot mode, secure boot mode, so that it can receive the package, which is also cryptographically signed. Um, so there are a lot of, let's say, um, countermeasures taken or precautions actually taken to make sure that it's, it is simply not a valid tech vector. Um, due to the tamper-proof design of the 
device, can the battery be replaced at end of life or of its charging cycles, of, of the end of life of its charging cycles, or if the battery gets faulty for some reason? Yeah, so the battery is not replaceable, uh, but it doesn't really have to be because of the fact uh, that the charge times are almo almost impossible for you to empty out your device, even after, even after all of the recharging you can do. Um, if the battery default is due to a faulty battery, you can get in contact with us and we have a two year warranty period. So if our support deems it's, it's uh, because of such an issue, we are happy to obviously help you and, and make sure that um, it's not you who becomes the dupe of the, of the story. Um, and also you have to think of, again, like you said, it's tamper proof design of the, of the device. It is not the intention that anybody can open it up, start to change components like with an iPhone. An iPhone is not a security device, this thing is. So that's also why it is not possible to change components inside. Rather we destroy the device and, and make a new one. <clears throat> then from Eddie Bolzan, what happens if I lost my finger used for my wallet configurations? Uh, yeah, so if you lose your finger, first of all, go to the doctor and then um, try to get it sewed on again. Maybe the fingerprint will still work. But uh, regardless, uh, the real solution is that obviously with our solution, you have the wallet. Whatever happens to the wallet, as long as you have a graphene, um, it basically doesn't matter for your crypto. You will not lose your crypto. Um, so if you have your graphene, you can buy a new uh, Engrave Zero. You can enter the code and all your wallets will be restored. You can also, um, so I don't know if for those who don't know it, we actually have two kinds of, of keys. We have the Engrave Perfect key, which we made specifically for the end-to-end -end security of the user. But we also um, support the mnemonic seed phrases, uh, the 24 words, 12 words from Trezor, and so on. Um, and also it's possible on the, in the device to convert vice versa whenever you want. Um, so you can also even buy another hardware wallet and enter your key. And so even if you lose all your fingers uh, and even your zero, um, it wouldn't matter for your the security of your crypto. What you can also do, let's say with your existing wallet without having to replace it is you can um, make 10 wrongful pin attempts. And if you do that, just like with an, with an iPhone, your um, your zero will basically delete itself, will wipe itself completely, go back to factory mode. And then you can re-import the seed um, from the graphene again, uh, select your coins and all your accounts will again be completely restored. Your fingerprint setting will be turned off by default and you can record any of your other nine fingers or toes. Um, yeah, then does the zero support multiple wallets using passphrase and or Panic codes. Yes, so the zero supports fast, uh, sorry, passphrases. We also have a video on that. I think it's video eight of the sneak peeks. Um, so after the AMA, you can definitely just go to our YouTube videos, go to the eight one. Xavier, our CTO, explains it very clearly. Um, uh, the way that passphrase phrase works, I can also just summarize it is you have the device, you are on the screen, you go to settings. In settings, you go to uh, security, passphrase, and you just you're able to choose um, your own specific uh, passphrase, uh, so the value of that, which could be a long word, for example. Um, let's say you uh, and your wife want to use the same wallet. You can, and you can both use your own uh, separate passphrase. So you can actually use the same graphene, but still not get into each other's wallets because you both have your own password. Um, and if we talk about panic pin codes, like the plausible deniability, uh, as we call it uh, technically, um, it is interesting. It's something that we will support. It's not yet confirmed if you will be able to do it by the version in October. Um, but generally, if you have your passphrase, you can go to a new wallet. And um, that kind of is what, the, ah, sorry, I think I'm, I'm actually messing two things, um, confusing two things. So the passphrase and the uh, plausible deniability, yes, eh, because it's just a passphrase that allows you to go into whichever wallet you want. So that works. Um, the panic pin code, we are still thinking about it. That will be a uh, later stage. Um, will there be a tutorial on the usage of the device later on? 
Uh, yes, so we already have these eight sneak peeks. We also have my video where I'm talking 10 minutes long about the product, but um, we, will, we will release a lot more of these videos. Also, what we haven't shown that much yet is the actual Menomonic Foray support. I think people will probably like to see how it works on the device. It's all extremely simple, straightforward. It's, it's seamless and fast. Um, and we will make a lot of videos and tutorials, short, in-depth, one, maybe two minutes max, to make sure that for you it's it's basically mindless using your hardware wallet and it's foolproof, so you cannot make any mistakes. Uh, we believe usability is one dimension of security. If you can make mistakes on your wallet, then you lose a lot of security. Then the question here is, uh, would you consider adding in verifiable user entropy like cold cards? Dice rolls with SHA-256 hash displayed on screen with each entered roll. Uh, so yes, uh, you could import already your uh, hexadecimal key with the D16 dice. And so that's already possible. Um, and just for your interest, as I, if, if I remember correctly, our CTO Xavier Xardard is actually <laughs> a huge fan of dice rolls. Um, he, he talked to us about that multiple, multiple times in the last two years. Um, how do you make sure the top plates are unique for each zero? So we actually use the true random number generation, the TRNG um, chips that make the same key, that actually make the private keys or let's say the master receipts. And we use the same entropy. So the same, let's say logic to get to that random key in our laser edging machines that print the top plates. So each top plate is unique and it's as unique as a private key, which means that you can say in theory, there was around 10 to the 18 different possible upper plate configurations, which is again, equal to more or less the estimated number of atoms in the universe. So to get the same plate as your neighbor, it's uh, virtually impossible. Then um, is it easier to use an Elipal? So, Obviously, we um, did two things. First of all, we we bought all the wallets in the market. We also bought all the bank tokens, the security tokens of banks, and any kind of other, let's say, relevant hardware security modules. And we we um, um, we broke them down up until the component level. Um, and we also obviously looked at the the user interface and the logic of that and the flow. And if there was anything we could learn from these solutions and take with us. And so. Apart from that, we also did user sessions over the last two years, including many different users over time and keep learning, keep making it simpler, keep making it smoother. And um, so our first impression with Elipal was that um, they can still improve on UX. And um, we also got that same feedback from users. And especially in the first version of Elipal, we noticed that some of the, let's say the logic of setting up new accounts um, sometimes didn't make a lot of sense. And um, I, I think to really go into depth into that topic, it's something we can do either after the, uh, the AMA, but what you can already do is you can go to our website, the product page of the zero, you will see a comparison between um, amongst others, Elipal, and you can also see in terms of user experience, what is so special about our solution versus, versus theirs. Um, and I also recommend looking at Ledger Dungeons, um, so for the, the the dungeon is a um, is a sort of an, an a hacker pool of ledger, and they review wallets on a regular basis. I also recommend looking at their analysis of the Elipal, and also uh, recently there was um, a review on the the backup plates um, done by James Lop. So you can look up James Lop Elipal mem uh, mnemonic plates, and you you will see what he has to say about that. And I think um, he does it very clear clearer than I can. So just have a look at that. Uh, somebody says, hello, thanks to Ruben and his nice and active group to put such a device into positive action. Um, 
and he refers to Jean-Jacques that is also in the chat. I haven't had the chance yet to really look. Uh, I, I see it, Chris Quater, Jean-Jacques, hello. Thanks to Ruben and it's nice and yeah. Um, yeah, so Jean-Jacques is in the team. Um, he's even in the, in the AMA here. For those who do not know him, he is a professor in cryptography um, and he has spent his entire career, which is uh, almost 50 years. It will be 50 years, I think, in the 1st of October, if I remember correctly. Um, um, then he will be 50 years into cryptography. So he is mostly known in the crypto space because he's the second reference of Satoshi's Bitcoin paper. Uh, so basically, he's one of the eight people that Satoshi referred to. He is really well respected. He is um, still today extremely bright when it comes to cryptography, hardware security, potential backdoors, and so on. And uh, we are extremely um, um, honored that he believes in our project to the extent that he basically decided to become part of the project. So he's one of our important advisors. And um, he, he, he's, let's say, quoted in almost half of the, the cryptography papers you will find. Um, and he wrote over 200 himself. That's um, uh, enough for my side for the, <laughs> for the compliments to you, Jean-Jacques. But um, um, feel free to also ask questions that you think might be interesting for me to also push to the, to, uh, the people here in the chat. How will an update look like without internet connection? So um, like I mentioned before, we have a USB-C uh, uh, port. See, so basically here on the device, you have a USB-C port that you can see. It's protected by a rubber plug. You can open it up. You can use this for wall charging and you can also use it uh, for the firmware updates. And that's also why we decided because we said from the beginning, we do not compromise in user security, therefore fully offline, therefore extreme tamper proofing. And we had to make the decision, what do we do with firmware updates? So we thought about SD cards, but we found it very user unfriendly to be hassling around with these uh, USB cards, uh, sorry, SD cards. And um, so we decided to go for USB, but if we did that, we had to go for the maximum security evaluation, which we did with EAL7. And so this USB, um, part is sandbox from the rest of the device. If you do your firmware update, it goes into secure boot mode. So special mode for receiving um, the right packages in terms of firmware updates. And obviously it is still part of the uh, protection under the overarching um, EL7 secure operating system. Can you open for ADA support? Uh, so not on the guaranteed list yet, but it's one of the top 10 coins, I think. So um, we are already looking at it to support the ASAP. And so it will, if it, not, if it won't be in the first batch in October, it will be in one of the earliest uh, firmware updates. Then Toby Tobin says, can I transfer crypto from my Nano S? So yes, uh, so we made sure that the device is fully compatible with any of these existing solutions. So if you have 12 words, like it's mostly done with Trezor, we have 24 words, uh, you can just import them through the uh, on the device uh, through the import function, function and all your accounts will be immediately restored. Um, yeah, um, maybe just to also clarify there that uh, we recommend though to make a new wallet on the Engrave Zero because um, we, we kind of have improved the key generation process so that it's not only the interior chip that is used, but also like your biometrics, uh, the ambient light. So basically external uh, factors to, um, to the key generation process, making it um, more protected to back doors, for example. Um, so we recommend to make a new wallet on the Android Zero. And if you have an existing hardware wallet, send your coins from there to the Zero, uh, to, so to the new addresses. Then can I have two persons access? Yeah, so I also answered that previously. Um, it means that would mean two people with the same zero. You can do that. It's not recommended. Um, you can say we just uh, use our, each our own fingerprints uh, to unlock, but it will be the same uh, the same wallet in that case. Um, but again, with the passphrase, you can use the full same wallet, even the same fiend backup. 
But if you have another passphrase, so let's say a password, and the other one has its own passphrase, uh, you will still end up, both of you, in your own separate wallet. So as long as the other one doesn't know uh, the other one's uh, password, you're, st you're still good to go. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's, it's not recommended, though. I would recommend to both have your own viewer, uh, but, but it's, it's possible. Are you going to add multiple cryptos in the wallet instead of Ledger Nano, which allows only 45 coins? Um, so in theory, the amount of keys and accounts you can have on your zero is unlimited. Um, also with our solution, if you wanna, let's say, add a new coin to the device, you don't have to do something like install an app uh, or with the older Nano S, you still had to remove apps if you wanted other coins because of the memory. I think with the new X, it's, it's better. Um, the storage capacity in our case is just above, let's say above one gigabyte. So it's it's absolutely not an issue with us. And if you want to add a new coin, you just go to dashboard, you swipe, you can tap on the keys, or let's say on the coins you want in your wallet. You can also do a very quick pre-fill search function. So you just say search, C, H, and chain link will pop up immediately uh, without you having to fill it in completely. And so, that's the only thing you have to do. Then you click OK, your dashboard will appear, and all these coins will be added automatically. So it's extremely fast and seamless. And we, we call this basically you're having your, um, your coins one tap away, because that's what it comes down to. Then question about firmware updates that goes more into detail. Is there a layer of security that protects the engrave from fake phishing firmware updates? So the firmware will be verified by a sort of a cryptographic checking against a cryptographic signature by the L7 firmware. And only if that firmware is signed by engrave, it will be accepted on the device. <clears throat> will ARC be available? So ARC will not be available in the list that we're shipping now. Uh, Xavier is keeping a list and he's studying all these uh, new and different coins um, to see in to what extent we can include them easily and fast um, and so on. But I think what, what, what's even more important to know if your coin, your favorite coin is not yet supported, to, uh, let's say by, by October, is that our coin addition um, system or framework or approach works differently from uh, most of these existing solutions. And uh, what's interesting to know is we have the memory. <clears throat> we have all the cryptography that you need already inside the device. And the only thing we kind of have to do is build the derivation paths to get uh, access to accounts, to get access to the, the right, um, the, basically, let's say you can also, um, well, we have to visually add the tiles or, of the, the coin, of course. Um, but yeah, I mean, in essence, it's, it's very simple for us to add new coins. It's not like um, we've seen on most of these USB-based uh, solutions. So it's, it's also going to go faster for us to add new coins. Um, how, how do you make sure the top plates are unique for each zero? Thanks for the answer, yeah, because I gave the answer. And then, but, but what if I lose my top plate? Yeah, so with your um, shipment, we will send you a unique order number. Um, and we will be able to link that um, specific um, piece of information to um, a unique sequence uh, at, uh, that is stored in our offline database. And we will actually, Maybe I'm going to technical, but we'll um, use some additional cryptography to create or recreate your upper plate configuration from that code. Um, and yeah, obviously, because we can imagine that some people don't want any kind of information to be kept on them, we can also take the option of removing your data even from the offline database, database if you if you want that. Um, but so the recovery of the upper plate happens through engrave. Um, the, the lower plate, the bottom plate, is one we cannot recover. Uh, otherwise, we will be able to know your key. So the, the essence of the graphene is that each plate 
will have a whole bunch of holes. And the lower plate, it's your responsibility. The upper plate, we can recover it for you. Uh, so if you lose the upper plate, we can send it back to you. If you lose the lower plate, um, in the default situation, you lose access to your, to your coins. But if you would know also the lower plate and be able to recover it, we would know your key, which is also not what you want. Um, so what you can do is uh, the solution we um, theoreticized with Chainlink and we are going to implement after October uh, for posthumous recovery. So if you pass away tomorrow, we can actually still get your lower plate to your next of kin. Um, and you can actually still use that when you're alive. Um, but maybe that's a bit too technical at this point. I think it makes more sense to have a look at our article on the blog where it describes how to recover both keys, um, oh, sorry, both plates, if you, if you would lose them. And uh, the easiest, you can, easiest action you can do to basically protect yourself against losing your, down, your lower plate is buy two. And so today on the, on the Indiegogo campaign, buying a second plate is 15 euros. So if, you, if that 15 euros can buy you that additional peace of mind, I would say, go for it. Because um, then you, you basically have enough backups. Uh, will there be any way from the support if someone forgets the password and lost the hardware wallet? Uh, no. So we have no information on your keys. That's crucial. Otherwise, we can hack you uh, or just steal from you. Um, so we provide you the tools for managing your crypto in your security. And as you know, existing solutions are either pure paper or metal plates that are singular. So if somebody finds them, they find your key. So our graphene already goes way beyond all of that kind of security and makes it a true end-to-end -end, uh, uh, story. Um, so if you lose everything, then obviously we cannot restore anything either. Um, yeah, engrave in 10 years from now? Good question. <laughs> um, so we looked at the crypto markets, or let's say the digital assets markets, and we saw that obviously today the cryptocurrency market cap and the size of it and the supply and the demand and how it's evolving is still really dominated by the end consumer, so the B2C customers. Um, and that's also why we decided to first attack, or let's say first go for that market. Um, we are B2C customers ourselves because we're also investors in, in uh, cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And so we said, okay, we're first gonna build a B2C product, which is our Engrave Zero uh, right here. Um, but we also wanna go obviously in the end to B2B. Why? Because that's where the the huge part of the demand will come from in the future. And in between, we see obviously there are still not a lot of steps to be taken. Banks are looking at crypto. Um, even Facebook is looking at crypto, but we don't really see them doing many tangible actions yet. That can change very fast. And uh, for us, it basically comes down to supporting the B2C market, ideally worldwide, become one of the top players in, in the market, and then go for um, a more B2B2C approach. And we have one of these unique solutions that can help you uh, or let's say that 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 can provide a sort of a security that no other solution can, and it's also very user friendly. But obviously, you might, as a user, already have your favorite exchange, your favorite uh, mobile app. We don't expect you to uh, migrate to our solution, to our app. Our app is simply there to fully uh, accommodate for our um, own ecosystem, standalone ecosystem. But if our, our idea is that we can help exchanges, we who have actually thousands of competitors and help um, all of these mobile apps who also have thousands of competitors to, um, to, to basically provide better and more accessible protection or security to their end users. And so how, how, how does that work? We provide that ecosystem and then wave zero. Um, so that let's say you as a user, you can actually, instead of using our app, you just use our favorite exchange and you can send your crypto onto one of these uh, accounts that are fully protected with private keys on the, on the zero. And if you need to have it back online again, it's another QR code. So we give the QR code technology 
uh, relevant uh, implementation needs to any of these exchanges, to any of these uh, hot wallets. And for you as a user, you can actually start using this with your favorite solution and they can basically um, differentiate themselves from their competitors who might not have such an integration and therefore not have the same um, super accessible security. And in the end, we also want to be in the back end of these, um, so, uh, of, of let's say exchanges and even the more traditional players like banks, because today these are already using hardware security modules. The Engrave Zero is a hardware security module. It's just a sort of a more advanced version eh? and an air gap version. Um, but so yeah, for us, it is also important to go that way. So we, we see ourselves in, let's say five years from now or 10 years from now as a crucial player in everything that's related to security. It doesn't even necessarily have to be hardware security yeah, because you have other kinds of interesting cryptography like multi-party computation, fully morphic encryption and so on. Um, and we, we also see the, the relevance of that. But if you wanna go to the extreme security, you have to go offline. And that's something you can only do with a solution like this. So we start from there and then we, basically built uh, further on that and also go into these different verticals. For the long version, <laughs> should listen to one of the interviews uh, with me. Um, will you have staking options? Good question. So we are ourselves huge fans of staking on a hardware wallet. This is one of the first big features that will be supported, but not before October. And now we are obviously fully focused to delivering you your zero, if you ordered one, by October. And, 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 and that's really our focus. After that, we will be looking into all of these amazing things like staking um, as, as, as fast as we can. When will there be screenshots of the app? Um, um, well, basically, you can already find a lot of information on our YouTube channel where we actually show most of the screens. Um, it's a video I'm doing with the liquid, number four of the eight. Um, you can also go to the website and even on the Indiegogo page, there you actually have a whole bunch of, of, um, of interactions with the app. So I would say that probably can answer your question already today. Um, what was the first company you started and what inspired you to get into cryptos? Um, what, what might be interesting is that um, I built one of the first robo-advisors in, uh, in Belgium. And the robo-advisor is basically an automated investment platform. Um, so what it does is it's an automated system that asks you uh, a certain number of questions on your risk diversity. And also on your knowledge on investing, like what is an ETF? Um, um, in this situation, which, um, which let's say, um, option would you choose in terms of potential upside of your investment and the potential risk you take in losses? And eventually you get to a sort of a risk profile. And what we do is we propose a sort of a portfolio that fits exactly your profile. It, takes your risk as a given and it says, given this risk, which I can never exceed, I have to maximize the um, expected return of um, the portfolio. And that means that the portfolio itself is continuously rebalanced with also automated. So we basically built algorithms to, to, to make sure that this portfolio keeps optimizing itself for your maximum um, 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 investment return, but still always keeping you under that level of maximum security one accept. And um, at, why, that, why, is that, why is that so relevant to talk about now? Well, because one of my personal um, um, big whys is to help, um, um, well, to help removing a bit of this injustice in, in markets. If you think about blockchain technology, tsunami what comes by, it wipes away all the land of, uh, um, in a developing country and suddenly a dick ends up and he says, um, I have a centralized database, all this land that just was wiped away, it's always been mine according to what I've see, I'm seeing here. Um, the farmers, let's say, cannot do anything about that. They used to have a paper version of the notary, it's gone. And with blockchain, that was something I really liked is that suddenly they can all stand up, say, whoa, look at this. I have a computer, I have a computer, even there in another country, you have a computer and they all, and they all say the same, it is my house. 
and your database is wrong. So that kind of injustice is something I'm really motivated by to basically solve it. And with Robo Advisory, it's one of the previous um, projects I worked on, um, you kind of have a couple of the same things eh? because portfolio management or wealth management is only accessible if you have a couple of hundred thousand dollars or even more, a million. And then you have a banker or two, or let's say a team that's working on optimizing your portfolio for you. But what they are doing is they're trying to uh, beat the market, stock market. Um, and as we know, and as you can, can find on the internet, um, it's almost impossible to consistently beat the stock market. And so what we actually do with our solution is we follow exactly all of these benchmarks and we basically follow exactly the moves of the market. And by doing that, we actually have the same or better um, return even than those active funds. And because everything is automated, it's low cost and people can already start investing from $1,000. And suddenly they have the access to the same kind of returns that these um, other um, let's say wealthier people can have at a lower entry point, at a lower cost even. Um, and that's very disruptive. And that's also why uh, in the US you have seen that by now that's a trillion dollar mark. Uh, okay, but that was my five minutes on that. Um, so back to Ingrave. Will Liquid, so the app, be able to connect to one's own full node? So this is an advanced feature we might integrate at a later stage. Um, and by having the Liquid open source, basically any third party app can integrate that QR code communication. And so some apps already have support for what you're mentioning here, the full node. Um, so that's a wait and see. You can, um, yeah, I think that's the answer. May I know the screen type and resolution? Yes, it is the, the is 800 times 480 TFT. And the memory is one gigabyte. Will you support uh, back 32 BC1 BTC addresses? Not at launch, um, only the legacy P2P KH addresses, uh, but we have complete support for SegWit. So, uh, sorry, um, complete support for SegWit is, is part of our um, top priorities. Oh, this is a long question. Um, when you mentioned about the plates and each plate has a special code or serial attached to the specific plate, top plate, does this apply to users who don't opt to purchase the plates? I'm a little confused here. My end goal is to be completely no serial number linked to my account, even offline. Um, yeah, so basically we do it if you would lose your upper plate. We um, don't have any information on your keys, as I said before, um, with only the upper plate. We have literally zero bits of information. Um, so we have to brute force the full key, just like any other hacker would have to do. Um, but it is your right eh, to decide that we are not even allowed to um, keep record of even the recovery option. Obviously, then you lose the fact that we can help you there. Um, so later on the website, the idea is that we will allow a checkbox where you can, if you order it even through the Indiegogo, um, to um, ask us to basically forget about you. And if you can't wait, you're always welcome to send an email to support and we will already, um, we will make sure that, it, that we, that we um, respect your, your request. Is it still possible to join the giveaway to win one of the combos? No, the giveaway ended just before the Indiegogo campaign. Uh, but you can visit the Indiegogo page. Um, we're having big discounts, uh, thanks to our, all of our very first engravers, um, to thank you for basically pre-ordering it, be, for believing in us even before we have shipped uh, one of these devices. And um, so it's not free, but it's uh, at least at around 3 8% now, I think, still in discount. And somebody asks again for the firmware updates. Um, yeah, so like I said before, you have uh, the USB, um, you have the USB, um, it's sandbox from the rest of the device. You have the EL7 overarching secure firmware that actually takes care of whenever you want to do a firmware update and the device will go in a special secure boot mode. 
You can also look at uh, one of the videos where we talk about the EL7. Um, how would you deal with the issue of inheritance of a wallet? Can you have dual finger fingerprint sign-in? Yeah, so you can register up to five fingerprints on the zero. Um, you can also have your graphene plates in your will at your notary, even without using a solution of us. Uh, but have a look on our blog because we actually have um, theoreticized a fully new approach decentralized to recovering your uh, graphene plates um, to partly by uh, engraved partly by a third party KYC provider. But we are having just a part of your uh, key. Uh, sorry, we just have part of your plates. We have absolutely nothing of your key. Um, and I would just say go to the Medium post because that is obviously quite an uh, interesting topic. Okay, any more questions? Yeah, I wish I could afford the engrave for life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Start with buying one maybe and see how it goes. I think uh, we've answered all the questions actually. Yeah. So we still have three minutes. If you have one last crazy question, go ahead. Uh, uh, will the bottom plate have serial number on it? The answer is no. Um, but you can actually link, let's say if you have 20 of uh, plates, you can link the upper plate and the lower plate. Um, not sure if there is one here around, but the lower plate has sort of a special um, couple of marks. Um, one second. Yeah. So you have a couple of marks that you can also punch with your uh, with your uh, punch pen, uh, so with this pen, um, and that that's where you can actually make a codification that shows you like this lower plate is linked to that upper plate, uh, and so on. I actually have a box here, so I'm going to open it up just to show you. Yeah, so here on the bottom. Yeah, so here you can actually see that you can make holes as you want, and you can, by doing that, link the upper plates with the right lower plates. So you can have 100 plates and still, and still be good to go. Then, do the firmware updates include support for future cryptocurrency? Yes, that will be the main pur purpose of firmware updates. Um, will there be a discount for repeat customers? That's a good question. And um, we already have, um, I think we know exactly who all our backers are, obviously, because we have name, email, and so on, um, all protected by GDPR and data privacy. But um, so, yeah, we, for us, all of these our Indiegogo backers have a special place in our life. Uh, in our heart, and um, yeah, you'll probably be if you if you buy something now, you will see that we um, that we will not forget about that. Then uh, mo the most important question of the night: Will Belgium win Euro 2021? Of course, of course. Uh, yeah, so it's 2095.59. The EMA is stopping right now. Thank you so much for joining. Um, we'll try to make a wrap up of this as well. And yeah, amazing, a lot of questions. I'm very happy. Uh, you can contact us on all our social me media if you still have questions. Um, so Telegram is, like, might be a very good one if you still have questions. It's, uh, you just go to Telegram, Engrave, you'll find it. And the email, the ideally use support at engrave.io. And also our support or chat on the website is very fast. Louise will help you with any kind of question you have. And um, if you have special requests for the Indiegogo payments or something, ask her. Uh, well, um, obviously, we are everybody here is sleeping uh, after midnight until 6 in the morning. But so that we can answer, can answer, but you can always leave your questions. All right. Gracias. Merci. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to end the stream. Feel free to spread the word about Engrave. Uh, don't forget to choose your colors, the green, white, silver now, which is open. And maybe spread the word right now in the last eight days that we can get to the gold color. And then it will be, uh, we will be extremely, extremely grateful. Thank you. <laughs>